Hello guys, welcome back to part two. I know it's been a while, but I've been very, very busy. So I don't know how long we're going to be going today. Might just be going for an hour because, well, there's not much else to this game. And I don't want to be going on for two hours. So we'll see. We'll see how we feel. Yeah. You and your storyteller friends slip into the water. It's just the right temperature for an evening dip. Plus, if someone, if some jealous shark comes along and manages to jump in from the ocean into the pool, you're also pretty sure your killer companion could handle it. Before you run out- oh, I forgot we were with her. <laughs> I forgot, to be honest. Before you run off, I wanted to make something clear. You know that half-woman, half-beast I was talking about in my story? This me, I'm here. No way, how cool! No way, how cool! Ah, crap, I moved my camera. There we go. That's really awesome! Thanks for being vulnerable and telling me such a personal story! Huntress Fox Shy... How's that? Fox Shyly twirls her hair? Okay. Tell the truth. What did you think of my tale? Do you, I have the makings of a best-selling author such as the comedic mastermind Doshkafusi? I, I... I'm sorry, I don't speak Russian. I don't know how that's pronounced. I'm pretty sure I, sure I just butchered it. So... It was a really well-told narrative. Clear beginning, middle, and end. Riveted from the start. Plus the woman in the forest, I mean you, are clearly not a true villain. You were just traumatized as a child. Okay, now you're just being a suck-up. Huntress's eyes leer at you from behind her mask. <laughs> She's had her time in the spotlight and is playing coy now. Call out her tired. Oh, that's no, that's fucking mean. Call out her tired storytelling. Chuckle awkwardly. You chuckle awkwardly at Huntress's statement of the obvious. Why are you laughing? I can't help but giggle when I'm both about to die and also maybe falling in love. You can't believe how awkward this intimidating woman seems right now. It's actually pretty endearing. You notice the temperature has dropped significantly despite your despite your steamy company. It's a little it's a little chilly and your bare shoulders must be freezing. Let's head back to the fire and put me to bed, eh? We hate to intrude on whatever smooth moves we're about to unevil unveil themselves. But it's time for bed. Usually night time is when I do my best hunting. But after a day like today, even I'm pretty tuckered out. Will I see you tomorrow, Geek? Only if I don't see you first. You make a cute little bow bow hunting motion. Hunt just catches the imaginary arrow you shoot in her teeth, and then bites down hard, snapping it in half. At least, you think that's what she's doing. It's kind of hard to tell. <sighs> <sighs> Alright, moving on. Good night, my little snack. Jesus Christ. Oh. They just want to make me suck up, do they? Eh? They know my weakness. They know my kryptonite. I'm sure that wasn't a reference to actually eating you. You head over to the campfire. The heat is comforting on this chilly night. Looking into the crackling embers, you think about Huntress's story of the half-human beast that abducted all those innocent children in an attempt to save them that led to their doom. Are you a mistaken prisoner here on this island? 
Is this your salvation? Or will it be your demise? Hmm. Before you can dwell too much on your fate, Claudette and Dwight arrive. They're now familiar creepy smiles stretching from ear to ear. It's a bit menacing to see a smile like that lit by firelight. We must apologize for the accommodations. We weren't prepared for another guest, but we're going to make you comfortable or die trying. They hand over a pillow and blanket to welcome you to snuggle up by the fire. And welcome and snuggle up. And a blanket and welcome you to snuggle up by the fire. I don't know. I don't know English. I, I, apparently I don't. Perhaps some music will put you at ease. Just try to keep the volume to, a, volume to a minimum. Our other guests aren't the types you'll want to rob of their beauty sleep. Beauty sleep. Mini games consist of two parts. I have to play a goddamn mini game just to turn the volume down. On a top, a pointer which rotates in a clockwise direction. And on the bottom, a target you're going to be pointing at. This here, this here upcoming minigame is a special minigame, perfect for the less coordinated because there is no winning or losing! Well, not technically. Wherever the pointer stops, that's your result. I suppose it doesn't stop where you want it to. That's a bit like losing, but no one has to know if you don't tell them. Okay, ready to play? Or would you like me to repeat that? No, it's, it's pretty simple. Ready! Away we go. As you relax into the fire, the radio begins to fuzz and flicker. You examine it and decide that you might adjust the dial to fix it. Where to, where to, where to? 94! Let's see what's on this station. Listen more. 96. Let's talk about our community. For us, it means uh, two major things. First of all, the community is you out there. It's you and everybody else either playing the game or talking about the game or creating content relating to the game or being inspired by the game to write music or to make outfits. It's everybody that's part of what makes Dead by Daylight this amazingly rich and passionate environment. It means Groups of people who interact on every single possible social platform, in person, it means people who play together, it's even the people who play by themselves and never talk to anybody. Uh, so it's important for us to, to be able to break it down and, and figure out exactly who is part of the community and how do we listen to them, how do we get close enough that we can actually hear what makes them happy, what makes them excited, what worries them, all of this. We need to know about that. So. Uh, the other part of community for us is the community team. It's our team that we... Oh, that's know. nice, but I'm gonna keep, uh... uh four years ago is pretty I'm gonna much put it to someone else. And, and Ash and I. Let's see what's on this station. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. No, 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 we're... We're listening to this. That's... This is... This is our stream music, guys. This is what we're going to be singing to, this is what people are going to write songs about, this is what people are going to be parroting, is this moment, this rock music, and it is actually really good. Yeah. Got nothing more to say, it, it, it is really good actually. But I gotta turn it off, because we gotta press on. No matter how many things you listen to, you still can't sleep. You decide to ask one of the killers to spend a little more time with you until you're sleepier. I know which one. I think I know which one. Who would you like to summon to your side as you lay by the fire? Spirit's a close second. I would have called on Spirit. Rafe, nah. Trapper, no. Nah. Just not a guy person. But Huntress... Hear me out on Huntress. Okay. Just... I, I don't really think I need to explain myself. I'm gonna stop right there. I, I shouldn't press on. 
Huntress, are you around? I was wondering if I could get a little company. Huntress appears in an instant. You really didn't hear her coming. See? Going down the arm. I like the dress, too. The dress is nice. Little blood on the mask. Little suspicious, but not going to question it. She's more than happy to tell you her secret for falling asleep. Shit, I dropped my, my fidget toy. For falling asleep when she's feeling restless. Is that some of human tea? If a Soviet lullaby doesn't work, this special mushroom tea has always done the trick. When I'm not coating the blade of my hatchet in it to ease the passing of my victims, I'm steeping it in a piping hot mug of water. Try it. You do. You finally start to feel sleepy, except maybe this isn't really a sleepy feeling. Maybe you're paralyzed. You try to keep your eyes open, but you can't. Darkness overtakes you. The dark voice from earlier speaks to you again. It shouldn't still be as spooky, but now you've had a whole day of strange voices in your head. But this one is still undeniably odd. Had a good time on the private yacht today, huh? That comforting, rocking sensation. That was all me. Oh yeah, you're welcome. You awake suddenly to see someone looming over you. Why is it gotta be you? Trapper is sitting beside you, sketching a portrait. Oh, you're awake. I saw you with Huntress right before bedtime. You should know that they're not what they seem. Not like me, who is obviously completely honest and trustworthy. That's a president's face right there. Slap that on a poster. I was out checking to make sure you weren't sleeping near one of my... Actually, never mind. Just be careful where you sit. But since I'm here, I'd like to share two things with you. One... I do not take rejection well. Two, the first thing is very important to remember. Were you drawing me? Trapper doesn't answer. You aren't drawing stink lines radi radiating out from me, are you? Still nothing from Trapper. Are you drawing me fucking naked? Look, I'm not an easy guy to get along with it. With... But I'm an easy guy to spend time with. That'll make sense if you choose to spend time with me tomorrow. The rest of this scum live like rats. They wouldn't know a good time if it bit them on the ass. I mean that literally. Point is, if you select me for... If you select me, you're in for a day of luxury, extravagance, and fun. Yes, I said fun. And if I don't pick you? Remember what I said earlier? Or it might be the last thing you ever forget. <coughs> but hey, you look tired. Get some rest. Sleep. Maybe, maybe even sleep well. If you can. Just try not to roll over to the... Uh, about 15 feet to your left. Finally alone for real this time, maybe, you drift off to sleep again. Hopefully you're not poisoned. Wait a second. Where are we? This isn't... Oh, jeez. It's one of those reality TV show confessional rooms where all of the contestants talk directly to the camera. I think today went really well. These were some of my first interactions with someone who isn't a parent that didn't end in bloodshed or untimely perishing in my Russian cottage. So I'm counting today as a win, no matter what happens. What do you think of the new... What do I think of the newcomer? Oh, do I have to say? Oh, I do? Okay. Hmm. 
attracti mysterious I really don't know that many other words since I was raised by my mom in the woods until she was cured by an elk and I had to wash the entrails off my suffering that being said the other three should me make sure to be on their guard. I don't know who this newcomer will want to spend time with tomorrow, but I for one will not let my guard down easily. Who knows about the others? Raid, I think, knows more than he's letting on about this place, but he's a hard nut to crack. Meanwhile, spirit is just screaming all the time. Major buzzkill and trapper. Oof, where do I even begin with trapper? He's buff, sure, but daddy issues much? Sheesh. Look, I don't need anyone. I've been perfectly fine on my own since my mother died. I eat a fine diet of raw deer, beer, of raw deer, bear, and human, and I'm as fit as a fiddle. That being said, something about this newcomer makes me think that I might be missing out on some huge part of this thing called life. This is weird. I don't care enough to kill this person, but if anyone else wants to, I don't care enough to stop them. I'm gonna have to just kill Dwight to feel anything again. Yeah, today was fun. I don't want to get ahead of myself, or really, um, invest in something that might hurt me. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll just see how it goes. Or maybe they'll realize I'm not one for them. They seem pretty smart, so that's probably what will happen. I gotta learn to go easy on myself. Who could love me if I can't love myself? I know that everyone thinks of me as a beautiful, cold-blooded monster. I can't help it. Circulation just isn't my thing. I don't choose to be cold. This cute hat and robe, okay? Those are a choice for sure. If someone were to come around and capture my heart, at least, that beats being stabbed in it. Besides, if I'm going to get bloody revenge on society that has used me and throw me away, maybe it wouldn't hurt to have a little help. <laughs> 